Let's get back to the show. Um, is irrelevant. If Christians were supposed to keep the Sabbath, the ideal time for Scripture to have told us so would have been in Acts 15. If Christians should keep the Sabbath, the disciples need only to say, and remember to keep the Sabbath holy. Instead, they say the opposite, to whom we gave no such commandment. There is not one commandment in the entire New Testament for Christians to keep the Sabbath holy. If there was, I would gladly keep it, and I would encourage others to do so. Oof. I hope he watches this, because we're going to talk about this right now. So he said that uh, a perfect time to mention this was in Acts chapter 15, but there was no commandment to do so. And I think he only highlights the part that says, to whom we gave no such commandment. But there's a sentence before that. So let's read the context of Acts chapter 15. So this is what it says. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. It says this. And I'm just going to read a few verses so that we can get a context. Of course, you may all read on your own. But this is the context of Acts 15. It says, And certain men which came down from Judea taught brethren and said what? Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. What is the issue here? Circumcision. Unless you're circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. That's the issue. Hold that in your mind as we continue to read on. Verse 2, it says, When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go to, up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. This is the main reason why this meeting happened. Because they were being told they have to be circumcised after the man of Moses, uh, after the manner of Moses. Let's look, verse 5, you know, this is the other verses I missed is about them getting ready to go. But it says, But there arose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep what? The law of Moses. There is a distinction between the law of Moses and the law of God. I'll get into that in a moment, but just keep that in your mind. The issue in this chapter is about the law of Moses, particularly about being circumcised. And verse 10, I'll just read verse 10. It says, now, therefore, this is, you know, th them talking. It says, now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put, what does this word say? Yoke, yoke. Hold that word in your mind. Why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fa fathers nor we could bear? Right? It's like, why are you making these men get circumcised? That circumcision is a yoke that we could not bear nor our fathers. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Verse 19. And we're getting closer to the verse that he brought up. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. So this was what he said. Just, just have them do this. Was that going to be all? Let's look at the next verse. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him. Being read how often? In the synagogues every Sabbath day. So the issue was, should they be circumcised? Paul was, Paul was saying, look, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They, no, they, they, they don't need to be circumcised. We only put this on them. Abstain from pollution, fornication, strangled, th things strangled. But everything else that they were to learn, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. What this is telling me is that Paul expected these men to go to the synagogue every single Sabbath day. Talking about Gentiles. He expected them to be in the synagogue every single Sabbath day. I'll read one more verse. So then we go to the verse that he talks about, and we'll see the real context of it is this. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law. In context, what law is he talking about? To whom we give no such command. Verse 5. Is verse 5. Law. Law to whom the law of Moses. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let me show to you guys that... The, there is a distinction between Wait, the law before, of Moses. Before you even say that, Jason, 
I know there's a lot of back and forth going on in the chat, but I want you guys to really pay attention to this point right here. Like, just really pay attention to the point that Jason is about to make. All right, go ahead, Jason. Thank you, Deontay. Um, all right, so let me show you guys that there is a distinction between the law of Moses and the law of God. Man, there was a verse that Jesus said, in your law is it not written this. Like even Jesus was like, look, in your law is written this. But let me show you this. De Deuteronomy 4, 13, it says, and he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even the 10 commandments, and he wrote them on tables of stone. So mm -hmm. it should be no surprise that God wrote the 10 commandments on a tables of stone. But look at this. There was another set of commandments, which the Bible calls the law of Moses. Uh, Deuteronomy 31. And I'll just read some verses here. I'll start with verse nine, for example. It says this, and Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests of the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord and unto all the elders of Israel. You can fast forward. He said some things, very lovely things. And it says, and it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in the book until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant saying, take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against you. God's law, the Ten Commandments, was placed inside the ark. The law of Moses was placed on the outside, on the side of the ark. Let me show you something else. Deuteronomy 4.14, it says this. It says, and the Lord commanded me, this is Moses talking, and the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might do them in the land you go over to possess i'll show you second kings 21 verse 8 second kings 21 verse 8 it gets a little clearer each verse i show it says neither will i make the feet of israel move any more out of the land which i gave their fathers this is god talking only if they will observe to do according to all i have commanded them God is saying, if they do all that I have commanded them, and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. So we can see here that there was something that God commanded them, and there was something that Moses commanded them. And that was the statutes and the judgments. Last verse I'm going to share with you on that point. Daniel 9.11 says this. Yeah, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curses poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. So what you Daniel understood was there was God's law and there was something written in the law of of Moses. So when we talk about what Jesus did away with, and we're going back to that verse in um in uh was it Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. We could touch on yep. that right now if you like. Uh, I'm gonna go to Galatians chapter 5 so you can see that how all of these things are connected. We're gonna touch on um, but let me go to yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all connected. Let's go to Galatians so that we can see that major issue in Acts 15 was about circumcision. And, you know, people are just constantly mixing these things up. It's, it's not all the same. One is the law of Moses and one is the law of God. This is Galatians chapter five. And actually, we learned about this this past week on Saturday. And I learned a lot. Actually, there's some brothers in the chat. Um, Taylor is one of my guys. And of course, Edwin Cotto. We talked about this. So I learned a lot from them. But this is what it says. Galatians five, verse one. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the... Remember that word I asked you to hold on to in Acts 15? Yoke. With the yoke. What was the yoke? Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall not profit you. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to the whole law. Christ is become of none effect to you. Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. What law told you to be circumcised? For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor, uncircumc nor uncircumcision, but faith with worketh by love. I want to read to you a little bit more in this chapter. 
So you can see the first six verses about circumcision. And so what law dealt with circumcision? We can already know that there was a distinction between the law of God and the law of Moses. Nothing in the Ten Commandments says be circumcised. So it must be the law of Moses. But let's go on so I can show more of a clear distinction. Verse 16, this is what it says. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What does it mean when you walk in the spirit? I'm sorry, guys. I'm going into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it going. Keep yeah. It going. yeah, this is what it says. Let them cook. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ have made me free from the law of sin and death. For that which the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Here's what happens. Stop reading read. at verse three. Here's what happens when you read, um, when you are really in the spirit, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Mm -hmm. So when you are really walking in the spirit, what's going to happen is the righteousness and the word righteousness. One of the definitions of it means the right doing the things that the law says to do that is right. The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, which means Jesus fulfilled the law. It still means Jesus done. fulfilled the law mm -hmm. and those who are le uh, led by the Holy Spirit, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in them too. who walk after the flesh, walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I'll read verse seven. Talking about being carnally minded. I'll read in context for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So if you are a person that says you're filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will not lead you into sin. Sin is the transgression of the law, First John 3, 4. But if you're led by the Holy Spirit, you will be fulfilling the righteousness of the law. The persons that says we don't need to keep the law, the Bible calls them carnally minded. And they're enemies of God. Last verse I'll share so that we can understand it was the law of Moses that was really the issue. It's particularly the, the, the things that dealt with circumcision and everything that had to do with reconciliation of sin. Look at what it says. Circumcision is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. But what? the keeping Keep of the commandments the command. of God. That's it right there, guys. That's it. That's it. That's it right there, guys. Yeah, that's, that's pretty mic good. Yeah, that's a mic drop one right there. Because technically, the commandments of God was a part of the law of Moses, which is a circumcision one. Why would they feel the need to still make that distinction as far as still keeping the commandments of God? Right. So the point is, there was a ceremonial law. I showed you it. The word ordinance means ceremonies. And let, let me just say this now. We'll probably come back to it again. But Ephesians chapter 2, you know, you only read verse 15. But read the context. It says, Love wherefore, it. remember that you being in time presence, Gentiles in the flesh, you who were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision, circumcision. in the oh. flesh made by hands that at the time where you were without Christ okay. being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world but now Christ Jesus you who sometimes were far off made nigh by the blood of Christ for he is our peace who hath made both one and have broken down the middle wall or partition between us the middle wall of partition that was between them was circumcision Jews were saying be circumcised and Jesus Christ was saying no I have abolished that having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments not just any commandments, because you're saying, oh, he abolished killing. So it's not okay to kill. He abolished stealing. So now it's okay to steal? No, <laughs> the context is not that. Having abolished in his flesh, in the, even the law of commandments contained in Jesus. ordinances. The oh. Ten Commandments were not ordinances. I'm sorry. Uh, um, I, I couldn't, you know, it, it's, it's, yeah. Lord, I have so much to say on this. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to reel it back in because uh, I'm the sorry, irony, Randy. The, the irony is uh, is real. I, I tell you, you know, um, I think you made it clear. Ephesians chapter two verse fifteen talks about you know what's contained in ordinances, um, which makes a distinction from the actual law of God. One was written on stone, 
although it was written by hand by Moses. And it's funny, you know, people people comment as far as, you know, the Sabbath was in that law, but I never, you know, see them fight against, you know, I never see them fight for, you know, the adultery and all those other commandments. Because technically those are done away with and I can go in and sleep with your wife as well. I can steal mm-hmm. your things as well. Right? I, I can do all that stuff against you that, you know, the last six has not to do because at the end of the day it's done away with then you know, it doesn't matter. Right. So, you know, it's 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 a it's I won't say the cop out for lack of better words, but all I'm saying is, you know, clearly the scriptures, especially first Corinthians seven nineteen, I thought that was an excellent verse. And makes a distinction between the law of God and the law of Moses. And in understanding Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm sure we're going to go to Colossians 2 as well, we can see that it was very specific what exactly was abolished. Um, so um, I, I almost feel like we, I don't, I don't want to take too much time, so I, I'll let you guys continue, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on it later. Amen. All right, so we're going to move along. We, we touched on a lot of points, but hopefully this is all clear, that there are two types so. of laws. Yeah. If not... On Saturday, <laughs> then we'll talk more about it. But uh, let's go. Cool.